Christmas and toys, well, they just go together. Kids today may be hoping for a $350 smartwatch or the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figures, not to mention Transformers or even the Doc McStuffins talking mobile cart. It's so different from when we grew up, right? In the 1950s or 60s or 70s or 80s, maybe even the 90s, we wanted the ball mitt or toy train or give a show projector, high tech for its time. Who can forget the Easy Bake Oven or Nintendo 2600 game system? We thought it would be interesting to go back even further, back to the 1850s, 1860s, 1870s, to find out what kids got for Christmas back before there was even electricity. Where better to experience a Victorian Christmas than at the Perambulator Museum at 26 East Cedar Street in Jefferson, where we met up with the twin sisters who operated, Janet Palo and Judy Kaminsky. The Victorian era, the dolls were very important. The children were very rich. These are status symbols for wealthy people, the carriages were. And the, uh, the more wealth the family had, the more beautiful the doll with the carriage. So it was a status symbol. You yeah. right. show how much money you had by... Correct, but some of the, even the poor children had dolls. I mean, that would be their one gift. If you were going to get a sp special gift for the season, mm -hmm. then you would get a uh, beautiful doll. They passed them on down to their children. I mean, they kept them. They didn't play with them a lot, mm -hmm. the, the very nice ones. They might have gotten them a cheaper doll to play with and then one to keep to, to pass yeah, down. to display mm -hmm. at Christmas time at certain mm -hmm. events. And put in their little carriage, because they had little carriages that mm -hmm. they got for Christmas too. And you'll see um, up above, there yeah, are sorry. some wonderful little pianos and there's little doll carriages where their dolls would be featured. done by Michael Ricker. He's world famous in pewter. Uh -huh. And one of these is on display in the Smithsonian today. The carousels were as famous as, real famous in the Victorian era. So they, people they, had them Very in elaborate. Homes? No, more of them went to the parks, but okay. they would get smaller versions mm -hmm. for their children. <laughs> the boys uh, loved the, uh, the wonderful uh, tricycles. In the early times, they were called velocipedes because they had three wheels. And uh, the example of the velocipede was a very popular item in the Victorian era. And then in the winter time, they would have a sleigh to push uh, down the hills, and uh, they, uh, each one was a little different because they were handmade for their particular desire. Yeah, the carriages could be turned into into sleighs, all of them, mm -hmm. and put, take the wheels off and put sleigh runners, even the children's carriages. Huh. So they were very um, adaptable to cold weather and warm weather. Okay. Now, are we talking about like really rich people with this or, or did Pretty much, but there there were some people that would own a carriage but a more simple design. But these were artists who designed these carriages. And they all had seat belts, they all had braking mm. systems, and they all had um, um, Usually sterling silver knobs on the tops of the parasols. And they'd, but, uh, they'd, they'd and have beautiful they, upholstery too. Yeah, and the adaptability for the wheels to just pop off and sleigh runners to replace them. So tell me about the grand piano then. The... That well, actually came from a wealthy family that also had a, um, it had a little sleigh to go with it, mm -hmm. a we children's have, yeah. sleigh. So we purchased both of them at the time. But that was a very uh, wealthy family who were from Chautauqua Lake. And in the uh, snow, they would push the uh, the little carriage, and um, they used the little piano for inside. A wealthy family um, from New York City actually had a, uh, their little girl wanted. They took her downtown New York in one of the big toy uh, department stores, like um, like a Macy's, and they bought her this set of dolls for her Christmas present. The and it was a real treasure, and that's the Dion Quintuplets. <laughs> we have uh, many um, children's um, instruments. They were given as a Christmas present. There's a little child a hand accordion in our collection, many little pianos, um, but they also had 
little harmonicas and different other um, items that because they were taught uh, lessons during their childhood, so they would be well cultured in, the, in their future. A collection of children's toys. There's a little carriage and there's a little drum and a little Schoenhut wooden doll. They made dolls of all types of materials and she happens to be a wooden doll. And wonderful um, rare children's stories there. One of them was about Alice in Wonderland and, and uh, little um, uh, blocks, wooden blocks there as well. Mm -hmm. And a uh, Cupid doll. And there's a six-sided puzzle over here and a Victorian, even a Victorian vaporizer over on the other side. Over 1,200 1, miniatures in the collection. And we did a children's story a few years ago uh, with one of our carriages as the uh, focal point oh. of our carriage. And we've done two other books on carriages themselves. In the paintings. Our house is from Cape May, New Jersey. And it was a uh, lady's uh, possession that she had collected over 30 years the pieces inside the dollhouse. When she had passed away, she left a word to her um, daughter to sell it to us if we wanted to purchase it from the museum. This was a, uh, um, a, a special like a um, velocipede would be to a child. Mm -hmm. This is three wheels too. So it's somewhat like a velocipede. Uh, the one pedals like a little pedal car and the other one is pushed and the reins will steer the, the little horse. pony. She rocks up and down. And, she's and the pony yeah, goes up and down like a rocking horse. Old pump organ. It's just a wonderful little mm. character doll. Some more different style dolls that may get. And throughout our museum, we have chandeliers that are that help show off the pieces. Now here's a real rich little girl would get this doll. She's over 100. And they didn't have very many boy dolls, but they do did have some, and we have quite a few of the boy dolls in mm -hmm. the collection. And he's a Wonderful Kamer oh, Reinhardt. What he's riding in a silver car. And he's riding in a carriage exactly like um, Prince um, Charles. Prince, no, Prince, yeah, Prince Charles carriage uh, from England. Excellent. And that is the Cadillac of the carriages from England. They had the buggy style. Anything with the hood is called the buggy. And so that would have been a really beautiful buggy. Um, he not only um, rocks back and forth, but he goes up and down. And he um, goes on rollers as well. Just uh, mm. there's a, a, an article about him. There are only a few in the in the world that are still, um, and he's still you know kind of a rough stage, but beautiful. And this is from Paris. Paris, France. The the cabinet up there with the uh, wonderful doll on top, and she is a, a Granier doll. She's a very rare Granier doll, um, and um, she is on top of a. Uh, cabinet that came out of the captain's quarters on one of the Great Lakes ships. We have wedding dresses for the, when the little girls grew up, they were going to wear wedding dresses. We have wedding dresses throughout the museum. There's a couple there for an example. 1885 The very elegant styles were throughout the Victorian era. And the most um, famous of the wicker carriages is right here, the Sultan. Mm -hmm. That is the best of the uh, Victorian carriages. And uh, it, it was once owned by the Vanderbilt family. And it has a beautiful baby jumeau French doll in. The French dolls are the rarest in the world. How much would it cost someone at that time to buy that? Well, they were priceless. I mean, we we don't even tell the the amounts because the um, the very um, special ones there was not a price guide for them. But there are carriages. Uh, you could get a carriage back in the Victorian era anywhere from um, five to ten dollars up to forty fifty dollars. And and then the real special ones there was no price for. Mm -hmm. They were just special made. 
So why this is a fluttering tongue. When you pick her up, her tongue flutters. Okay. This was the Edison talking machine, and they made those, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Edison, he um, uh, wanted to create, it was like the first record player, only instead of a record, it was a cylinder. And the cylinder had, um, I'll show you, it had looked like the same type of um, way a record would look, only in a cylinder form. And they had wonderful stories and music on these, and we have over 50 of these on with the go with this. And this, they, you could make a, you could use the Edison talking uh, machine with a small megaphone, and then we have a larger one down there that we can fit it on the floor. This one has a, a, a wonderful hide to him, mohair um, hide to the horse, and he is a pull toy, um, and uh, it has the little wooden, original wooden wheels on it, and it was pulled. There is a perfectly harmless little cap, a little pistol, but it has lead, um, uh, little lead weapons inside. Nerves. Mm -hmm. Salesmen would come along and try to sell the, the family a little stove, and this would be an example. And they're workable; they were workable stoves. So if they wanted to purchase one for their child, all the pieces would come and they were actually functional. The Zeno cabinet would feature some of the little children's toys. Like the tiny from little the dolls and purses. Even a little compass down here. And some early ornaments. Christmas ornaments. You had a great deal of money and you wanted to have a special gift for your child, you would get her an automaton. That is a um, moving type of a doll, and she's a little ballet dancer, but uh, she still dances. But we like to have things moving, so. This is, like a, this is our latest. How old is this? We have, this is not old, but it's from the, they take them from Victorian replicas. Okay. So we have all of the ones that ever came out from the Lennox Company. Mm -hmm. And just for, to delight the children when mm -hmm. they come through the museum. So this would be an example of what the earlier toys might have looked like. Noel Barrett, from who Antique um, does the Antique Roadshow appraisals for mm -hmm. toys, owned that car. Uh, Karen sold it just like a one of mm -hmm. a kind. And the little boy car. doll is from the 18, 1850s. Mm -hmm. He's a China head boy doll. And he's pretty rare, so he got to go in that carriage. And what's the picture in the back? It just uh, a photograph That's of a, a photograph of a little boy back in the Victorian period. And that's the outfit he wore, like the hat. Mm -hmm. So it was similar ideas. Yeah. We, put the photo, we have a fabulous collection of photos. There's over a thousand symbols. Twelve hundred. And they're all oh, different. Hundred. Like I talk about artwork. From all over the world. Mm -hmm. Were they actually used in sewing, or is it more something no, to keep? They were actually used, used. but but uh, uh, many of them were so rare they didn't. Of course, they just put them on display. But they would pass them on to their child. Um, back then, they tried to teach their child to sew, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so they just, needed the hat yeah. hands. And they're a beautiful art form, but every yeah. drawer is filled, and that's an antique cabinet they're in about rare. That's a French Punch and Judy stage from Paris, France, 1800 with the original drop-down curtain. Well, Lucille Ball's carriage as a child. Mm -hmm. Her grandmother owned it and Lucille Ball rode in it. And we picked the doll that reminds us of Lucille Ball, K-star Simon Halbig from the 1800s. Christmas room for all year round. And uh, we keep, we've added a, a wonderful collection of children related things, including a Old Lionel train, it still works. Um, little little blocks, uh, picture blocks for, for puzzles, yeah. blocks to put together. And Wonderful little pony. That's a, a platform, you pony. call her. And she's got the original hair, 1800s. And those are two children's books of, in Cleveland, the early May Company. Yeah, show them and up it, close. Yeah. Yeah, it, this is the May Company, a little book featuring the May Company for the children to come at Christmas industry. time. Hmm. And then we have Higby's. Not to be outdone. Yeah, the Higby's had to come up with one that was also 
very inter interesting to the children for Christmas to buy their toys. Now, um, then there are, um, this is interesting, the Dillard's Company, which was before that the early Higby's Company, uh, every uh, for the 75th anniversary this past year, they uh, came up with a toy, the, uh, and only each store only got one. But they were animated like the early uh, toys in the yeah. storefront windows. Cleveland. Now, this, this no, is a treasure. Fabulous. This. The stove here? The stove is it's a sales. Advertises the top in the world. They made the company from Piqua, Ohio. It was called the favorite. We guarantee favorite. best in the world cast iron child stove. It was a salesman sample. That was a salesman sample from that company with all the parts. It opens up and, and it works. Even some of the soot is still in there. Yeah. They pulled the little hands out for the children to bake their bread. They actually did. The favorite stove range uh, company, Pickawa, Ohio. Yeah, and that wonderful mantle came from the Forbes estate in uh, Painesville, Ohio, from the Forbes mansion. Mm -hmm. And our wonderful little doll truck full of treasures mm -hmm. came out of it. We got a version of Black Beauty there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have, um, we have a lot of the And that's from the classics. The Black Beauty book. Beautiful. And there's our little train, riding oh, train. All the toy. The people love that cast iron uh, wheels and metal. It's got a lot of use. Children the rode on it. are in still pretty good condition. Is that a radio? Yes. No. no. This is a clock. Oh, okay. Down there. That's a Victorian clock. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the carriages actually were high chairs and convert into strollers. Yeah. That and there's one in the corner like that. And this one. Now, the earliest making. style carriage they made was this style. That is the mm -hmm. cab style. Two wheels in the back, pole handle in the front. And uh, just one wind, one yeah. wheel in the front too. And a little window for viewing in the back. It's interesting what Santa looks like in the, the night before yeah. Christmas book. Yeah. There are so many versions of Santa. Chris Kringle stories. And now, look at I like some little folks. This is some of the toys they play with. I don't know if you can, but it's a cute book cover. Well, then Excelsior Sleeping Coach. You want to put that where he can... Um, oh, okay. <laughs> but, it's a sleeping feet. coach. It reclines like a strand lounger of today, uh -huh. but it's hand-carved walnut wood, and it's uh, they even use Persian rugs in the bases of these carriages. But uh, that was really elegant wooden one. Around the 1880 era, and that's a and uh, we're a hundred year old little doll that went with the care. Well, that she brought for that particular little crib, she wanted her doll in. And this doll house is just full of little treasures. Those are all that's all antique furniture in the mm -hmm. doll house. Wire, twisted wire, twisted wire. It rocks and it rolls, in place and it has record. a top that could you could drape the a linen only over. The one we found in mint condition over over all of our years of hunting for it. And show the picture of what they look like with them when they. This is a die them. cast. Oh, one. Mm. That's the type of a coverlet with the mm. over it. We have the original sheer coverlet for that one. Yeah. 
We like to show the workmanship. Right. And the little girls, the little dolls, they'd get little muffs for them. This is a little dog. He's a, it's just adorable, the little muffs that he threw hands for him. Oh, and then if you, if you had a special doll for your bed, there's a boudoir doll boudoir. in the background. They we'll put them on for the bed for the decoration, like. And a little Civil War a mirror for a little girl that was dresser so that she could make herself look pretty. Yeah, that one was oh. an antique. A very wealthy family, and they were the um, Whitfair family from uh, years and years ago. Oh, that no, goes man. back to the um, um, 1700s. 1700s. Really? It's a Queen yeah. Anne high chair, and we still haven't um, found the worth of it, but we know it's quite valuable because we have a photograph of the original dining room set that went with it. And four Victorian walking umbrellas inside. Mm -hmm. The photograph that you see, we got. The, we did get the uh, carriage a year before we got the photograph with the baby in it. A year later, from the same vicinity. Wow! If you can believe that was quite a meant to be. It's a child's invalid wheelchair made by the Smith Company out of New York City back uh, in the 1800, and they pushed quite well. Were there more children that are invalids then? I would well, think so. But a lot of them had um, polio back or yeah. mm -hmm. different they ailments. Diseases and they those are all of the first six ladies of the White House. Those are uh, Madam Alexander, oh. uh, White House first ladies, the first six of them in the uh, outfits that they would wear back then. Here's a little donkey cart. They had donkeys pulling them and the goats, actually, live ones at the time, but oh. this is on rollers. And she has her original hair. And then that boy's philosophy behind us. Did you see that little boy riding on? From the 1800s, wood handlebars and three metal uh, wheels. It's a metal frame. This one, uh, Queen Elizabeth and Princess Margaret, when they were children, rode in this carriage around Buckingham Palace, pulled by four miniature horses. And the cabinet opens up and holds four children comfortably, and the lights work on it. Yeah. And this is the painting our artist did of our carriage in Grand Central Station with the uh, ponies that would have pulled it. Munchkins and the Wizard of Oz rode in that carriage, too. This is an old cast iron stove called the Roper Stove, and um, the children could play with it. They loved to play with it, and they had the little pots and pans that came with it. And then we have a Sunny Susie washing machine that actually works, and the little girls could wash their little doll clothes in it. It actually worked. So this is sort of what a washing machine looked like for adults, too? No, it was, no. it was just made, made like for, the adult style, but just made in mini. Right, made right, that's what I mean, though. Yeah. It's a toy. Of, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it still worked, as um, it would actually wash clothes. We have that wonderful little sleigh. That's up from the 1800s. That little doll is in a little toy with the original stenciling. And we love that Prince Calusa Princess painting. Our artist who did all our paintings, like of our gondola and the 13 paintings in our calendar. He um, designed that Calusa Princess, which ran, the Calusa River runs right along the Edison Museum in, in Florida, Fort mm. Myers. It's called the Daisy. Um, it's a goat cart um, that was actually pulled by goats. And um, the seat is sliding for the child that rode in it. It could go back and forth. and. They would have to hang on because the goats were fast. <laughs> <laughs> you would roll out into the field, the women would work while the babies would so run. Like down. Their field, field carriages? Field carriages. Uh -huh. They roll out into the field, the women would work while the babies would rock back and forth in them. And the earliest one was made back in the 1700s. This one was made in the 18, uh, late 1800s. And one of our rarest here is a doctor's carriage. That's the painting art did of it. 
in San Francisco setting, but this um, has the original lanterns that were their kerosene. Can you imagine putting that on a baby carriage? Yeah. <laughs> but they liked style and they wanted to push their child. Now, those, these drop down, so in the summertime, the babies had the fresh air and it has the original fringe and, uh, and top to it. And then there's a brown knob that you can pull out. The handle could be pushed in the front so they could actually be pushed or pulled that style. It's just a beautiful piece mm -hmm. with the silver and sterling silver around each of the three windows. But a prize piece. And the boardwalk chairs, they pushed it along Atlantic City with the Victorian ladies that would dress up, small adults would ride in it, and another adult would push them. And we have this big, beautiful, antique German Armand Marceau doll riding in it. Saturdays, 11 to 5, mm -hmm. and uh, public are open. And with groups of five or more, uh, we're open anytime. So we take groups, you know, they get, get together, we'll take them through the museum. Well, any unusual groups or? Oh, we have red hatters. We have um, people from different colleges, different museums, um, every walk of life. And we get a lot of people in the summertime from Europe, mm. Canada, England, Japanese, um, uh, just about, you know, we've had so many people walk in our door and it's um, 25 years, 26 years of the museum, and we're going into our 27th, but we've had people from Europe and all over the United States, which is exciting, but we don't get enough, you know, that mm -hmm. really know about us. That's our goal, is to try to get it out. So people from our area, mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, we're just a treasure, and we want to show it as a treasure.